I miss the old Damascus, like it was before the war. <laughs> Suddenly, my life became a living hell. Look at that crummy little boat. It was our eighth try to get to the sea. We weren't allowed to go down there. The smugglers wouldn't let us, but I managed to trick them. We were all nervous about the boat. We'd heard it had sunk three times already. I went down and checked it out, and then I felt a little better. When I was little, I always dreamed of playing by the sea. But when I actually stood at the shore for the first time, it was a completely different feeling. I looked out at the water and thought, only God knows how many refugees have drowned here. They started inflating the boats. I wanted to turn back, but the smugglers had guns and knives. When the smuggler says, get into the boat, you do it, even if the sea looks rough.
The guy steering the boat was also Syrian, a refugee like the rest of us. But he didn't have any money, so they let him steer the boat as a way of paying. One child almost drowned. We were anxious about the children. My daughter was terrified of the water. We lied to the women to calm them down. We said, we're almost there, it'll be five minutes. We tried to keep everybody's spirits up by laughing and joking. We said, if the boat capsizes, we'll just swim. We're that close. There were too many of us in the boat. Most of the people sat in the middle, at the other's feet. I was here and my uncle was there. I was afraid we'd sink. After half an hour, I started to worry. We were out on the water, about halfway there. I could see the island. But the sea seemed to get bigger and wider. And then I had an idea. I decided to record a message. Then I thought about how my mother might see pictures of our dead bodies on the beach. As the latest victims. There is this woman who swallowed a lot of water and lost consciousness. She turned blue and couldn't feel a thing. We were afraid she would die at any moment. Then we continued in these vehicles, 32 people in each one. It was really hard for us. We were crammed in there. No room at all. You squeeze in. One person sits on the next person like sardines in a can. Those guys were crazy. They were doing drugs and drove like madmen. We held on to our neighbors to keep from falling off. I was really careful about filming. It would have been bad if I'd been caught, especially by the traffickers from Libya.
The sun burns. And you only get water when there's a break. If someone fell off, they didn't care. If just one person fell off, they wouldn't stop. But they would if several people fell. After two days, they told us to get out on this wide open plain, and then the traffickers took off. Until then, it had been bearable. We still had a little water, but then we ran out. There was no one to help us. The sun was beating down. People were passing out from the heat. I did too. We drove through the desert for days, and then the truck broke down in the middle of the Sahara. The sixth day was the worst. We were hungry and emaciated. Our skin was peeling off. The desert is hell on earth. It goes on forever. We didn't have the strength to get to our feet. We were covered in sand and dust. We thought we were going to die. So we just lay down in the sand. It's terrible when someone dies right in front of your eyes. We shed a lot of tears and buried them in the desert. This is Camp Moria. That's where you register when you come to Greece by way of Lesbos. There were about 30,000 people in this camp. It was a little like being in a prison. People wanted to go right to the port area without registering. That was not a good idea. And then the police showed up. They needed a translator, so I volunteered. Back there, tell them to go back. How many meters? You will see the gap. Okay. They gave us our documents, and then we walked over to this big ship. It was huge, like the Titanic.
On the train, there was a child from Afghanistan, and we played together. I had conflicting feelings. I felt glad because I was getting closer to my future, closer to Germany. But I was also moving further from what I'd known. يلا يا شباب بدنا بدنا نخلص من مقدونيا تطلع بتلتقي بجماعة بيمشوا You join up with other groups. You just go along with them, even if you don't know whether they are headed in the right direction. Sometimes a police officer will point you in the right direction. You have to trust him, because you don't have GPS. Everyone is going in one direction, so you just follow along. The hardest part is that you never get a break. You have to keep up with the others. You've got to force yourself to keep going. It wasn't easy. You might have to change the baby's diaper, but you can't stop. Or the baby needs food, but you have to keep going. You have to stay with the others. We took this picture when we got to Ajdabia. Hold it up, I can't see it. 
It wasn't a very nice place, but I was glad that I could finally sit down for a change. When we got to Europe and finally had access to the Internet again, we uploaded these photos to Viber and Facebook. We thought that the worst was behind us, but there was more to come. There were a lot of Eritreans who'd gone there before us. This is where the refugees are brought from all the different trafficking organizations. You pay your money in Ajdabiya. It was a bad situation. Every evening, the traffickers came over and made trouble for the women. When the men tried to defend us by saying we were their sisters or their wives, they were beaten. It was the same thing every evening. Every evening. We crossed the desert with these women here. This picture was taken on a holiday, the feast day of St. John the Baptist. We asked one of the traffickers to bring us a candle. We were sitting around in the dark, and then we lit the candle to give us a bit of hope, at least symbolically. I was there for four months because I was short of money. And then I got some from my parents. If you didn't have the money to pay the smugglers, they'd beat you up. One family had no choice but to sell their house. They asked their neighbors to sell their belongings for them, to raise money. If you don't pay, you can't go back home either. What are you supposed to do? You've been trapped by bandits. My brother, who lives in Khartoum, managed to get us $500. That got us a dinghy. But when we saw it, we were shocked. We were so looking forward to the boat. But when we saw it, we weren't convinced it would make the trip. This dinghy looks like it would only last an hour on the water. Was your boat like that too? Yes, exactly the same. We were scared because you have to keep a dinghy balanced. 
You've got to have the same number of people on either side or it'll tip over. That would be dangerous, especially at night. And you've got to be careful not to fall out. We woke each other up and took turns standing. When you've been standing all night and you fall asleep for even a minute, you can fall into the water. You know that you could die at sea. There's no guarantee you're going to survive. But you hope for a better life for yourself, so you take the risk. When the boat started taking on water, we had to start bailing it out. We thought we were just delaying our own deaths. We figured we were going to die anyway. We were out in the water and the boat's engine broke down. I asked myself, why did I do this? Maybe it would have been better to spend 20 years in jail in Eritrea. People were stressed out and they were moving around in the boat. I thought it was going to tip over. I was so beside myself I passed out. The only thing you can do is to put your trust in God, and when we saw them coming, we were so happy. <laughs> I wasn't aware of what was going on, but we made it to Lampedusa. I only came to while I was being treated by medics. Hello, uh, on water. Thank you. Shukran. Good afternoon. Take, take. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mose. At that time, the Hungarian border was closed. The Hungarians had put up a big fence. This is Croatia. selfie. Serbia Stop. The 
حدود Here's the Croatian border. You can see the crush of people. Over a thousand people had been there for hours, and they were pretty upset. They started shouting, open, open. When we got to Croatia, it was total chaos. People were exhausted and they were really angry. The authorities had blocked off the train station. They told us to go over there and wait. The crowds kept getting bigger and bigger. There was no transport. We waited for a train for two days. People rushed the train. You couldn't stop them. They were climbing in through the windows like you see here. I tried to get in like the others. I was tired and I wanted to get out of there. This song was like an anthem for us. Off to Passau and nowhere else. We didn't know where the train was headed, but then we turned on the GPS and discovered we were going to Austria. Then over the loudspeaker we heard, welcome to Austria, in Arabic. That was the best part of the whole journey. It was the first time we'd heard the word welcome. 
I told my friends that I wasn't going to change my clothes until we got to Vienna. When we got there, I changed clothes. I looked really sharp. I said to myself, I'm going to be in Germany in a few hours. I felt really happy. I can't describe it. It was great to be in a place where people helped you. I was really surprised. I didn't expect the local people to come and give us such a warm welcome. None of us expected that. It was a complete surprise. The people were so nice to us and the kids. I never could have imagined it. This is Passau, the first city that we came to. I took a picture of the sign. We were so happy. I was amazed to see that the border post was like a little gas station near the highway. It wasn't like other borders that I'd seen. It was almost elegant. Just a gas station. You feel like you're passing through a wall. All these fences that people had put up. But for one moment, it was like the fences came down. Guten Morgen. Laufen. Hallo, wie geht's dir? Now I can live like a free man. Finally. I can save her life to the fullest once again.
Ich bin Mohammed. <lacht> Hallo. Hallo, Lama. Ich habe die Stimme gemacht, 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 